Hello and welcome to this extended version of our look at Kathleen Todd's HH50. Yep, we have already looked at an HH50 at Annapolis if you've been following along with the, with the series. Don't worry, we're not getting obsessed with HH or catamarans. We're still monohull people, but we just like this, this catamaran. And we had this sort of one thing about it in that we thought it was more of a racing boat. That's why we thought of wanted to go and have a look at a couple of cruisers that are on one. And it was interesting, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Todd and Catherine are definitely cruisers, but they have made some adaptations. So I hope you like the film. SV Lickety brings class and colour to the Porta Montenegro Marina. Her hull is turquoise. She's already sailed around the Caribbean and across the Atlantic, and her owners, Todd and Catherine, have clearly enjoyed every minute. She's sleek, beautiful, and quick across the water. It's a fast catamaran, but it's not a racing catamaran. So, um, and you can pretty much power it up as much as you want, um, which is nice. So you got lighter winds, it'll still go. Now we've sailed it quite a fair distance in terms of the HH-50s. We're the fourth hull and we sailed up and down the East Coast our first year and our second year now we're over in Europe and we just had our anniversary of being on the boat for just over two years. So. Um, we've got, we covered a lot of ground and it's been a great cruising boat. Um, yeah, I say it's a cruising boat, mm. not a racing boat, but she's yes. a fast cruising boat. Yeah. So that means you can be the first one in the port if you want to And also be. you can plan. You can actually say, I can go to that island or do that passage mm -hmm. and I don't have to have fantastic mm -hmm. wind. Everyone's always crucial. surprised at us. We we definitely want to have good wind, mm. but we're gonna we're you know everyone will be planning and they'll say that'll take eight days for us and we're saying like oh three or four days. Mm. So mm. it does surprise me the difference the speed makes yeah. when you're doing yeah. when you're planning. Does yeah. that not though make cruising a little bit more uh, just not so relaxing because. For me, I would think, okay, if I'm going to do an eight-day passage in three days, I'm going to be properly sailing that boat, and you're going to have to be on it the whole time. Can you relax when you're sailing that fast? Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's scarily comfortable. That's, okay. uh, that's actually one of the problems with it in my feeling, because sometimes you can become slightly complacent, because it's very comfortable. It's, you know, once your sails are set, you can, you can relax and... It's lovely to relax on the boat, but I have certain rules. Like if we're underway, it's good to have someone at the helm. If the, if the wind is big, someone should be at the helm. Because yes. mm -hmm. you can come inside here and sail if you want. Yeah. Go outside, set the sails, go back. I don't prefer that method of sailing. So I do think someone should be out there watching and feeling the real wind and knowing what's really going on because it's so comfortable. Yeah. And you don't want to forget. <laughs> I think the, I think the question is more, you know, do, how many reefs do you put in the sail? Yeah. What mm -hmm. what for sail are you flying? We always have we have a love-hate relationship with our reacher. I love he it. He has more. a love love. <laughs> <She has. laughs> I and, have a love-hate. Uh, you know, the reacher it's, it's like a spinnaker or whatever. You 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 know, it's it's designed to handle wind up to 20 knots but um, as sailors know you put it up you're blowing 12 and then it's 14 16 18 22 and all of a sudden yeah. it's like oh we got to get this thing down and it can get a little hairy yeah um so you can just power the boat where you want and what's really reassuring and you could bring that sail down earlier sure do you, do you have systems in Excuse place to, to, <laughs> e me? To, to easily, yes, I mean, but you always get caught on. And everyone <laughs> says that, oh, you know, reef, if you're thinking about reefing, it's already too late. I mean, it's what everyone says. It can that. happen but as a to cruiser, anyone. That's my point. Yeah. As a cruiser, you might be making dinner. You've got other things you're doing. You're yeah. not out there just sailing on the ropes. You're, yeah. you're, you're, you're living life. Yep. So, uh, you know, for me, I would think, well, there must be sometimes you think, oh, shit, you know, I've, I should have been on that and I, and I wasn't. So, so what's happening? Why have I... You know, I've sort of taken my eye off the ball. How easy is it to get yourself into, into real trouble? And there, it is trouble when the wind really picks up to get the reacher in, but it's, it's, it's doable and, you know, we, we kind of have it down. We've made Truly mistakes. Truly what's wrong with our reacher is the fabric is too thin. Mm, okay. And yeah. when we replace it, we will upgrade it. Yeah. Todd and Catherine have designed this boat to suit them, starting with extra solar on board. This has got to be the nicest, neatest 
solar package I've ever seen. I mean, it's just perfect, isn't it? The way it's yeah. the way it's gone it, there. That's really it's, nicely uh, done. And it's all carbon fiber. I actually drilled a couple holes in it, and I keep expecting to like poke around somewhere and find somewhere. Oh, they cheaped out and didn't put carbon fiber here, but yeah. no, it's carbon. So this is <laughs> oh really? Okay. Yeah, I I put those in because we when we do a crossing or a major passage, I put extra straps on the dinghy and I hook it into there. Yeah. And really cinch it up. Yeah. But so it's um, a whole carbon fiber sort of plate that they then then put these on. Yeah, so obviously it's, it's very. <laughs> Kept yeah, the weight strong. down nicely, yeah, and strong. Yeah, yeah, and the wires just run through the little gap there and down all the solar controllers yeah. and stuff are right under here. It's very neat, and, it's very neat. Yeah. More solar means it makes sense to go more electric. So I bought a marine designed um, induction oh. cooktop. Mm -hmm. And what's nice about this is it, it monitors how much electricity it's taking. Right. And if I over, if we've got stuff going too big, it will turn itself off and down, which is really cool. Oh, okay. So it's designed for marine, and they have all different configurations. And you could do two of them, you know, together and have four burners. You could do a three burner. They have all different kinds: a horizontal versus vertical. So, and I loved how little space it took up. Too. Absolutely, and and the oven as well. Yeah, so the oven's yeah. a speed oven, and this now I'll never live without a speed oven because it basically is a microwave and a convection oven in one. Mm -hmm. So I don't have the big cabinet with all the microwave up here. I have a 360 degree view in my boat, which right. I love. And the conve I, now that I've worked with one of these, they're, they're combi. So sometimes you're doing microwave mixed with convection, which you wouldn't really think about how handy that is. It saves electricity, yeah. which on a boat is huge. Yeah. So if I want to use the oven and I want to bake four big, huge baked potatoes, and I want them perfect. I want them crispy and fluffy and delicious. <laughs> I can do that in this oven in 15 minutes. So instead of running the oven for an hour, which it would normally take, like I do it in do. 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's electric, but it's also very conservative as far as its power draw, both of them. So I love them. <laughs> We're going to the bedroom. <laughs> really show ready, but at least you could see what it's like in real life. Okay. <laughs> got all our crap, you know. It's but, comfy, it's and you've got the views, comfy. haven't you? Which I really like Look with the catamarans. In here, yeah. Which equal ventilation. Yes. Low. Mm -hmm. And this is my heater. You know, I, you, as you know, it's been cold here. It has. I sit in bed here with my heater room. From the master bedroom, the bathroom is at the opposite end of the first hull. There's plenty of storage and even room for a washing machine. In hull number two, there are two guest bedrooms and a shared bathroom. Practical and comfortable. The guests share a shower. They call this Jack and Jill. Yeah. It's genius. And when it's yeah, just us it on is. the boat, this is our wet locker. So okay, great. It's, it's very handy. Yeah. On deck, everything is also carbon fiber, including the daggerboards. When they are dropped, this boat can point as high as a monohull. The boards are also extremely tough. They serve as a, a skeg, really. And we've, we've grounded a few times, um, but we've always, it, it's usually we're going slow. We know we're in a shallow area and we lower them a little further down, another foot or so. And then we've hit and we raise them up and we back off and we've been fine. Like, One who time. knew you'd use your dagger boards for that? <laughs> like, yeah. we use them as little testers. Like, put them down and then let's go and, you know, if you can't get a reading and you don't know how deep it is and the charts are just blank, like, they, we don't know what happens in here, we've used it to just kind of feel the bottom. Like, yeah. oh, we could mm -hmm. feel it. And they don't get damaged? No. No, I mean, we damaged them, but that was hitting rocks <laughs> on accident because yeah, yeah. they weren't, we didn't know they were they there. scraped them. And it, it's, it's, a, it's a philosophy, and it, you can play it either way. Outremer and most of the other um, catamarans that have dagger boards design them to break off if they hit. Yes. And I know they've exactly. had issues with sometimes the boat's just under load, sailing or whatever, yeah. and the dagger board breaks. Yeah. Um, this is the opposite strategy. It's just like make them so strong that they won't break and because the boat the itself boat. also has to be strong yeah. yeah in that whole area you know our boat is strong enough and then the boxes are pure carbon on top of it and it's pure carbon so they become this like reinforcement area whereas if you're a fiberglass boat 
it's not going to be able to take that hit. Yeah, so that's they what want, you don't want, want to have to strong break. bagger boards and the, the casing around it isn't strong enough, then you have a real problem. Yeah. The HH boats are light boats. They sit on the top of the water, yeah. which is a plus and a minus. So it will, it surfs down waves more than other boats really would. Really fast. Yeah. They're like razor sharp. It's a strange feeling yeah. when you're sailing. I mean, a beautiful feeling, but they just cut through water. Yeah. Mm. Do you feel that you have to have something in bad weather to slow you down in a following sea like that? Do you carry a drug? Anything no. Like We've debated getting one. We haven't gotten one. Mm. We I, I did a lot of research on it and um, kind of thought, you know, one of the HH, the OC, has a has a Jordan drogue, and that's mm. a real good drogue. Yeah. And I consulted HH about it, and they were like, heave to and let yeah. your boat flow. Yeah. Mm. Don't, don't use one. Yeah. They're very difficult single-handed to get back in. That's the problem. That's another problem, yeah. yeah. One other thing, on, on, uh, and this is something we, in our selection process of what boat we were going to get, is deck clearance is critical. Yeah. And the crossing, the would, deck, yeah. we hardly got any. I mean, we never They call them donkey slaps. slaps. Um, it's <laughs> annoying more than anything, um, but we've got over a, we've got yes. a me we've got a meter of um, deck clearance. Yeah. And, you know, some of the... If you're buying a catamaran, pay attention to that. And it depends where you're cruising, too, yeah. because if you don't have much, it's going to be very unpleasant in a lot of conditions. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You've got to be careful with the weight that you bring on board, oh, yeah. don't you? And this, especially because it's all about lightness. Well, yeah. What do you have to... How does that work in practice for you, for you guys? Are you always thinking about that, what you're bringing on board? Always, yeah. In fact, our policy starting, you know, some people, one of the HHs as a lesson for us was that everything they put on the boat, they weighed it before they put yeah. it on and they yeah. put it on so they knew what they were at yeah. accurately. Um, we didn't do that. We came with nothing. Mm. We just, we had 12 medium-sized boxes when mm. we moved on and most of it was clothing. And the, the policy was sort of only bring on something that you need mm -hmm. as, as you need it. And we brought stuff on slowly. And it's actually kind of amazing how much stuff you can get on a boat. Yeah. Um, no, but we, we're, we're super with careful. A, with a performance catamaran that actually had a hole in their table. And you lift the, the, the lid off that. And there's a pair of weighing scales underneath it. Yeah. It's, oh. it's, it's, it's for my wife when she comes on from after doing the She has to weigh it first. A couple of books. She, she puts it on, and whatever weight that is, something of that weight has to come has off. Has to come off. That's a yeah. good policy. That's the way they do mm. it. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that I think gave us a lot of comfort um, is that we've got crowd load pins that read in the Shroud. BNG. Yeah. Um, so we know how much load there is. And I mean, on a catamaran, the biggest fear is capsizing because there's no turning, you know, there's no yeah. turning back. You're yeah. over and you're done. And, and um, these are designed that they can fly a hull. Have you, have you ever done that? No, we probably, <laughs> I don't know if we, you know, who knows? That's Maybe not we what did. we're trying to no. do. Yeah, honestly. you don't want to do that. <laughs> no. But we know when we're hitting like six to six plus tons that we're pushing it too hard on yeah. either of the shrouds. We're so we lift. back off. Yeah. We're like, and that's why she says, you know, somebody needs to be at the helm, especially when the weather's tough. You need to kind of be watching it. You can't be down here and like, oh my goodness, the load's yeah. going way up. Run, Run up all there the way and out. let the sheet out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to be up there to let the Ready. sheet out right away yeah. or move the traveler over or whatever. Yeah. And what was your sail across like, the sail across from the States to here? It was awesome. I mean, <laughs> own the, like the, 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 the time owning our boat has been, you know, such a huge, one of our, one of our commissioners, she called, Lisa called it learning cliff. You know, mm -hmm. you guys, we get on completely stupid and, you know, literally three months later, she's blown away at how much we know and how well we can handle the boat because we ha we went off the learning cliff she said yeah. and two years later yeah. i can say you know it never stopped we have learned so much and one of the things you know an ocean crossing of course you learn yeah yeah so Cause, cause much some, some context to, to that then for people that, <clears throat> that don't know you because listening to you you might think that well, you've been racing boats all no. the time. To, to buy this is your <laughs> no. first boat. No, yeah, all right. So, so take us through that decision. A first boat that you're going to buy, and you buy an HH-50. I, I want to tell this one. Because <laughs> I think it's funnier from a girl's <laughs> perspective, because one of the HH owners, and when we were buying this boat, it didn't exist. Mm. So all the owners owned much more powerful boats than this. And I was talking to one of them, and he said to me, maybe you should get, you know, a Fontaine Peugeot or one of these other boats before you get yeah, this boat yeah, and kind of learn how to sail first. Yeah. 
And I remember kind of looking at Todd and looking at him and going, um, I don't have time for that. <laughs> I want my green boat, and I want her now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're right about your comment about HH not, they, they, they're, I think they're getting the whole cruising thing because they were all about racing. And a lot of the things that we struggled with them with on our order, like the solar, and we've got electric kitchen here yeah, too, yeah. they hadn't done before and they didn't really want to go there. It was like, we're messing with the electric. It wasn't it's HH, all... it was M&M. Yeah. Because they, they designed yeah. the boat and they didn't want anything to go wrong for us because we are cruisers and yeah. we don't yeah. know what we're doing and they didn't want us to explode the boat or mm. run out. But an electric out. kitchen turned out to be a great idea, didn't it? Now, now I think it's standard. I think it's what they recommend on the yeah. boats. Yeah. Yes, and, it's, and it, you, it's been helpful. Oh, I would. I, I knew even before I was on the boat that's what I wanted, and we were right. Yeah. Yeah. Without question, you want an all electric boat mm. as much as you can. Yeah. Mm. yeah. What do you, What do you think of the the forty four? You're talking all, <clears throat> all electric boats. I mean, they've obviously gone for the electric drive system yeah. that yeah. still has the the you know, sort of the generator hybrid type backup. What What's your thoughts on that? Is that is that something that you would I I wouldn't want the 44, even if we were buying now and yeah. that was an option. Um, I think it's a brilliant design and has, like, it's incorporating a lot of things we were thinking about five years ago mm. that we, you know, weren't able to do. So I think that makes it really interesting to see HH take the jump from the, like, R50 where, you know, just putting the electric kitchen in was kind of a big deal mm. and now they've got the 44 so this is a huge jump in just philosophy really yeah. and, and got innovation so it's great but um but it's it's a much smaller boat than my boat and this boat is yeah. perfect for us this i like her speed i like her sailing ability um we bought her before one existed so we aren't adverse to getting a boat that you can't sail before you buy mm. but the 44 i'd want to sail it before i bought it yeah. i i it has a good sail plan i mean I, it looks like it's going to be great and um you know i, I think it's exciting yeah i think for the money it's great and mm -hmm. if we were to get another boat we would buy an hh again i think definitely we would probably buy this size boat and we would probably put the uh, eco drive thing in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that is that. And one of the things we were trying to get with HH and Which we now lost the battle is to get some or all electric engines. Yeah. They oh. didn't want they. Yeah. That was something they no. did not want to go well, I there. Think, I think rightly so. I mean, I think mm -hmm. uh, I think Jimmy Cornell proved actually at the moment that's not really possible, That's even right. if you design yeah. around it. I, I think it's either the eco drive or you get, and, and it would be a little awkward because the power would be different, but you get one diesel engine and one electric in yeah. each hull. And then your diesel engine is your generator also. Yeah. We yes. have huge alternators on our engines, 185 amps yeah. at 24 volts. So yeah. when wow. and when and if we need to charge the battery, we're not turning the gen set on, we're no. turning we the engine on. We run the engines on. for 45 minutes and yeah. we're done. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually we just run one at a time. Yeah, but they're not, I mean, they're heading the right direction with the 44 and all the solar you can get on. We would have gotten more solar if, it if we been could, possible. but yeah. there was nowhere to put it. You know, we added the Davit. That was mm -hmm. all the real estate we had to put yeah. solar in. So, and I think they're going up to like five, five kilowatts, yes. which is double well, they, what they we have. They found someone that will, will build a, a solar for the, the coach roof, which mm -hmm. is completely made yes, to spend yes, to that size yes. that maximize the looks incredible the that they're using which, yeah. is, which is a great idea yeah. isn't it yeah, to be able to do that the other thing I've got to ask you about because it's so obvious when you arrive is the color <laughs> how, how did that happen I picked the color it was my idea <laughs> <laughs> not not <laughs> he he allowed me to pick the colors <laughs> without arguing about it <laughs> I, I, it's lovely. I'm and what, thank, what you, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. I don't know what they thought. I, uh, Melvin and Morelli, those guys were really pushing us to do hot pink. And oh, they really? now, okay. oh, wow. one of the 60 number one is going to be a, a, a hot pink. So she's coming to Europe very soon. Yeah. And that is a boat to look at. 
Okay. Yeah. And, and I can't wait yeah. to see that boat. Yeah, hot pink. I'm looking forward to seeing that one. Yeah, it's nice to have uh, the different colors, I think. And I like mm. the green that they've, they've chosen yeah. there. And they have chosen the SC version. Now, this is the sports version of that boat. So it's pure carbon. Everything's carbon. It's got those dagger boards. Uh, there is an OC version, which is what you might expect a cruiser to go for, which is a fiberglass version, but it's, it's still strong. It's got carbon within it, but it's going to be heavier. It's got dagger boards little dagger balls rather than those drop downs so there is another version of that mm. boat that you can get that is supposed to be a more cruising version mm. and of course there's the hh44 coming out as well which is is much more aimed i think towards the, the cruisers yeah. but that was a fantastic boat and i think the adaptations they made are working for them so they're perfectly happy with cruising around in it so yeah. we were wrong <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, as todd said in there i think if he uh, if if the hybrid version of their engine was available he would have gone for that and i think that does make sense i mean what mm. we were talking about in there with jimmy cornell is that he tried to have a completely electric boat and, and made it com completely for that purpose so lightweight loads of solar still didn't work as the boat that he wanted to to have to go around the world cruising because the battery technology he felt just wasn't quite there yet. But it is improving uh, as are solar is, yeah. panels. Yeah, Having yeah. the bifacial solar panels for instance yeah. means that you don't need as much it's space. It's all improving but I, th yeah. I think at the moment the, the hybrid version is probably the way to go so you've still got that diesel generator yeah. type thing which is running the engine so it means you've got the best of both worlds. You can use the, the engine basically as a direct engine if you wanted but really you'd be using it to just charge batteries and then run it in electric modes which means that when you want a little bit of extra push you mm, haven't got yeah. that noise so you won't be saying to me oh don't turn the engine on because i don't want the noise i don't there like will the noise, be no noise. <laughs> so i think that's lovely and of course that sort of technology is only ever really going to work with catamarans because you've got mm. the two engines you've got the, yeah. the regen drive off of two engines for that you've got the real estate for for solar so yeah when the day comes when you know we, yep. we're not we don't want diesel engines any fossil fuels anymore we're all going to be going catamarans, I think. Or we'll make the adaptations to monohulls. <laughs>